<laughs> How's it going? It's going all right. How are you? As well as one can be right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. It's pretty cool to be doing interviews in my slippers, though. <laughs> Definitely don't mind that. So, um, sure. for anybody watching, this is JD Cronice from The Sword. Um, and so the news just came out that your tour has been postponed with Primus doing Rush covers. How are you doing? Uh, I mean, we kind of expected it at this point, you know, uh, everything's getting canceled and postponed. So it is what it is. Yeah. What's been keeping you busy while you're in this quarantine time? Um, you know, um, uh, been working on guitars, um, just hanging out, hanging out with my dogs. That's awesome. Uh, and you live I, in North Carolina now, right? You guys, you left Austin? Yeah, I live in North Carolina. Cool. What brought you back to North Carolina? Well, I'm originally from Virginia, but, uh, okay. you know, I just like this part of the country. Um, Austin was getting a little too crazy for me. And, yeah. Uh, wanted to live in a slightly less populated area. Yeah. That seems cool. Yeah. Probably East, you know. a lot more inspiration for writing music out there. It, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty, pretty good for that. That's awesome. Well, you guys just announced um, two box sets. I'm going to try to get the names right. So Conquest of Kingdoms is yeah. well, that's, that's a... More, that's just uh, like an a LP set. Okay. Yeah. So it's an LP set of like B-sides and rarities. And yeah. then there's another three CD set that's yeah. called Chronology, which is all those songs plus um, like uh, some covers and, and some fan well, favorites plus, and stuff. Plus uh, some album tracks. Um, and um, it has a booklet with uh, a bunch of photos and then like history of the sword, <clears throat> excuse me, written by me and some other little things, um, you know, things like that. Yeah, it, it, it just, we couldn't have done... Um, uh done all that on with with the lps because it would have been like a 12 lp set or something so you know right and, and you'd have to flip it like a million times to listen to the whole thing <laughs> well you know it's a little expensive to produce <laughs> thing like that. That's but yeah that, the cd is more of like kind of a, a box set i guess you'd say like a or like a mini box set um yeah that's awesome so how did that how did you guys decide to do that now after two years of being on hiatus well, uh, the, the, it's actually been in the works for quite a while. Uh, pretty much n not long after we went on hiatus um, was when it, it started being put together. Uh, it's just taken a really, really long time for various reasons. But uh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, it seems like it's perfect timing with this Primus tour that will happen, well, just not now. It, it, it would have been, yeah. It, it was going to be perfect timing, and that was just kind of out of the blue. Um, we we didn't hadn't really planned any tours uh, around its release, um, and then they kind of, yeah, just dropped that on us one day, like, you know, how would you like to open for Primus doing it? Oh, and by the way, it's a Rush tribute tour. You know, <laughs> as if that wasn't enough. Yeah. So were you guys you know, um, vocally fans of Rush or Primus? Like, how did they, tell me about that phone call and how did they choose you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's, you know, that all takes place with the, uh, between, you know, booking agents and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, it, we just got an email from our booking agent, basically. Uh, yeah, so not that, not that exciting. You know, no, no personal yeah. call from, from <laughs> Les. <Lesson. laughs> so are you guys Primus fans? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we did, uh, we played a festival, um, a couple of years ago, I it, I don't recall exactly which one it was, but Primus was one of the headliners. And uh, during our set, like halfway through, I, I looked over to the side of the stage and, and Les Claypool was standing there, um, which, you know, didn't make things difficult at all. Uh, you know, <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah. Uh, but after the show, after the after our set, he introduced himself and it was, was really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it was it, we were really stoked when, you know, here a couple of years later. We, we get the call. That's so cool. But yeah, we, and our, I mean, you know, we are all we all grew up with that with Primus, and you know, who doesn't who doesn't like Primus? You know, you, you that's gotta, true. You, gotta, you know, it's only only people that take music too seriously. I think. 
<laughs> yeah, if you take music too seriously, Primus is not a band for you. Yeah. But. Um, so are you guys Rush fans then? Seems like you, you had a really proggy record in there, Warp Riders. I feel like I could he hear some Rush influence. Oh, for, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah just you know, with the whole like, you know, concept and multi-part song thing and you know that's they, they were pioneers of that that kind of you know nerdiness injected into rock albums <laughs> nerdiness injected into rock albums is a really good way to describe prog i feel <laughs> are you into any other prog bands um yes uh that, i'm not, that and that's i mean the band yes not just uh yes as an affirmative uh, right <laughs> um so what else i don't know other things that could be considered prog. Um, as far as like hardcore 70s prog, you know, like Hawkwind or Yes and, and uh, you know, uh, Rush are the big ones for me. That's rad. Well, I'm really excited when that tour actually does happen. I'm sure all of us are going to uh, be very, very thrilled to finally be able to see that because that's super cool. Yeah. And to have, um, to have it happen after Neil Peart died this year, of course, is super wonderful way to memorialize him yeah yeah that was that was a strange you know eerie but you know i guess kind of cool coincidence uh, i don't know cool is the word but um you know but yeah because that had already been in the works when oh know, really and, and it was just you know it's an opportunity i guess you know to. Uh, i just assumed that it was like right afterwards they were like let's let's no, do no, a tribute yeah, it was actually already it was already already in the works wow it just not hadn't been announced yet but yeah. Well, so take me back. So 2018, you guys put out a record and then you went on hiatus and then all of this stuff is like kind of out of the blue. So what, what was the initial reason for the hiatus? Um, fatigue. I don't know. Mental fatigue. <laughs> yeah. Burnout doing it for, you know, 15 years. And for me personally, you know, like, being the, the kind of main creative, uh, you know, member of the band, like the lyric writer and all that sort of thing. And the guy that started the band, you know, it, it just, it became like so much a part of my identity that, you know, uh, every little criticism of the band was a criticism of me and, you know, things like that. So I, it was, it was something I, like after, after that many years, I just had to kind of take a step away from and, you know, let it be its own thing and, you know, me do, you know, I need to just do some other stuff for a little while, you know. Yeah, so. that definitely makes clear sense. My head, as they say. Yeah, having every bit of art that you create critiqued constantly has got to be really hard. How do you, how does one learn to deal with that as an artist? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, especially <laughs> in this day and age where everybody is an anonymous critic on the internet, you know, and it's not just, you know, magazines or newspapers or whoever is criticizing is everybody um yeah i don't know how people deal with it it's it's rough it's just you just do you know you got to just concentrate on the people that like you and try to ignore the ones you don't but as everybody knows it's hard you know it, it, even the the one negative comment out of a thousand positive ones will like be the one that sticks with you all day but that's just that's just human nature totally and by the way i'm seeing a whole bunch of questions coming in if you guys could do me a favor and put them in the little question box at the bottom with a, a question mark, because otherwise they fly by and it's really hard to get to all of them. <laughs> that way it sorts it for us and we can get them all at once. Um, so this, looking back, what, what album would you say you're most proud of as an artist? Oh man, which album? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure which one individually, because I'm proud of all of them for kind of different reasons. Um, Cause we, each of them was a very different experience. Um, you know, I'm proud of age of winners, uh, you know, because it was our debut and, you know, and I felt like it was a really strong record and, and it was something that you know, we had worked on for a while before it came out. Um, and we did all ourselves. And then I'm really proud of gods of the earth because you know, I did most of the production work on that one, even though people think it sounds like shit. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like I meant it to sound. So, uh, you know, I'm personally kind of proud of that one. 
I think it sounds just fine. Because, I'm proud of Warp Riders because of the concept thing. And that was kind of really challenging to put together. Um, you know, Apocryphon, I think it sounds amazing. Um, and, you know, I, the, then High Country, I'm proud of that for us trying different things and, you know, making a different sounding record. And Youth Future for just us putting it all together and making like this, you know, what I think is a really like well put together, you know, pro sounding rock album. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm proud of all of them. I don't know, you know, <laughs> it's hard to pick one just because it's all different reasons. It seems like, so you mentioned two in there that were kind of a departure from your sound. We talked about Warp Riders being more of a proggy record. Seems like High Country, you guys experimented with like more of a bluesy, dancey kind of sound. Yeah. Um, what was the decision there? Um, I mean, it wasn't so much a decision. It was just kind of what, where, you know, where, where I was creatively, I guess. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, I see it as almost kind of an Americana uh, record or a tribute to, uh, you know, American music um, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for me, like after Apocryphon, like, you know, I didn't want to try to just put out like record after record trying to like out heavy ourselves. I just felt like that was a losing battle, you know, and so the only only choice was to just try something, you know, something different. Where, where... Yeah, you got to challenge yourself sometimes to get out of a rut. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, it's a super fun record. It's it's a totally different vibe. It's like, I mean, all of your records are fantastic. But that one, it seems like it must have reached many different audiences that your other ones might not have appealed to because no, that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> How successful it was. Eh. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. And then of course, Age of Winters. Age of Winters is so crazy to me because it's such a great record, but it's so, it was so huge and it was your debut. And it seems like right out of the gate, you guys just kind of exploded. Do you, do you think that a lot of that was because you had the song on Guitar Hero or was it just like the music industry at the time or what was going on at that um, time? You know, the Guitar Hero thing definitely didn't, didn't hurt. Um, but, you know, I don't know if that was all, you know, uh, 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 it, if I would credit everything to that. Um, I don't know. I think we just kind of hit it at a good time, um, you know, where there weren't, wasn't a lot of stuff like us around at the time. Um, and yeah, it was a little different and it was, you know, exciting. I don't know. I don't know. It just, uh, yeah, it just kind of worked out. I think it was just a good, we, yeah, good, good time for us to, to start our band. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I certainly didn't mean to say that, you know, it was the only reason because of Guitar Hero, but it's just so crazy for a band, like a rock band, to explode out of the gate, debut album, humongous. Well, the Guitar Hero like, was actually a little bit of a fluke, or uh, it, like it almost didn't happen. Um, they had reached out to us, uh, and, uh, you know, we were, we were still, you know, not, not very well known. Um, and uh, they, I think they, like, I'm, I'm not sure of the particulars. It was so long ago and I don't really re remember, but basically they were, they were going to not use it. They were good. They had, they had, I think they were going to decide oh, this band's not quite big enough to be on this game where, you know, maybe we will use this track. Um, but something had already been signed or something like that. And uh, our lawyer sort of <laughs> held their feet to the fire and was like, no, nope, you already agreed to put the song in the Amazing. game. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, you know, we, we, Thanks, thanks to him, um, you know, uh, Brian Christner, uh, shout out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we ended up on the game and it, it worked out and, you know, it worked out so well that we got to be on a couple more. So That's so cool. I yeah. kind of wish there was more opportunities for bands like that now, like um, some really, really huge mainstream thing that a rock and roll band can be a part of. It seems like yeah. for the most part, that's like pop, hip hop bands which are of course amazing but it's just a, a different world that rock and roll bands used to get opportunities for yeah yeah I'm, I'm, it's kind of interesting that those games sort of had their sort their era and didn't they haven't you know there's it hasn't been sort of a, a new ne next generation to come along uh, you know of guitar hero yet maybe maybe yeah you know five, i haven't even thought about that like they stopped making those and they were so much fun i wonder yeah. I wonder yeah, why they decided to stop that. A, yeah, it was such a uh, hot trend there for, for a while. You, you, I mean, sooner or later, I'm sure they'll 
think, you know, everything, you know, in, in entertainment will they'll try, to, <laughs> try to sell you again at some point. So I'm sure. Right. And then suddenly it'll be like a retro throwback and we'll all feel yeah. very old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, on a personal level, when I was 19, uh, I lived in San Francisco and I worked for PlayStation at the time. And that yeah. was like right when that came out. And so it was my job to demo games for like crowds of tourists that would come into the PlayStation store. And so when I was a teenager, I would like play Freya all the time for, <laughs> for a bunch of people. And so that song will like live in my brain forever and ever. And I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nope. Sorry, my tripod just fell over. <laughs> um, there are a whole bunch of questions coming in, so I'm going to get okay. to a couple of them. Uh, Jarrett Games wants to know, is the band going to do a headlining tour once all this COVID crap is over? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Uh, you know, because we did have, um, you know, some headlining dates scheduled along with the Primus dates, which are, you know, also going to be have to be rescheduled um so yeah uh we'd like to yeah and, and we were we were planning to do some west coast dates as well so everything will get you know rescheduled to whenever it can be rescheduled that's awesome so we can we can assume that the sword will be a band again and maybe go off we, we never stopped being a band you know we just stopped like you know touring and putting out records for a little while actively doing things that makes sense yeah. Let's see. JT Poynton wants to know, are the lyrics to Sword songs based on any books in particular? Some of them. Uh, a few. Uh, more, more songs from the first few records, uh, or first couple records, I guess. Uh, but then uh, Apocryphon um, has a song called uh, Dying Earth uh, that's... Um, based on uh, the book of the same name uh, by Jack Vance. Um, you know, then we have uh, on Gods of the Earth, you know, there's some Conan the Barbarian references and a couple songs uh, that, you know, reference uh, Robert E. Howard stories and uh, uh, trying to think what else there is uh, in there. But yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Uh, there's, of course, you know, we haven't got the Game of Thrones uh, to take the black reference there. Um, and so yeah, I think I think that about. Cool. You guys, your subject matter has definitely spanned across many different themes in your career. Yeah, you know, it's there's it's hard. You got to look look high and low to find things to write songs about these days. You know, <laughs> totally. Um, Jesse Murdoch wants to know how was it touring with Scott Reader opening for Caius Lives. Uh, awesome, super nice guy. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, tour, that was a great tour. Both uh, dates with Scott and with Nick were all, were great. They're both really cool guys and it was a great experience. Fantastic. That's rad. Kai's is my favorite band of all time. So that makes me happy. There was a question about that. Oh, more book questions. That seems to be a popular question. Um, Mike Levy wants to know, has the break been good for you? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, it, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean, it was necessary, you know, it was, uh, I don't think it, it could have been bad in that way. So, yeah. Give your brain a break. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you, so you, you released three solo songs last year, and Kyle has also been working on a solo project, or like a solo career. Yes, um, can we, all, expect... we all pretty much have have solo stuff or uh, other projects. Um, I actually have four songs. Um, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I have the least, you know, output. But yeah, I have four songs on Bandcamp. And today, by the way, is a good day to go download them because uh, Bandcamp is donating uh, all their, you know, giving the artists all the proceeds today. So uh, check that out. Um, so yeah, you're, Kyle, the swords, um, or tell people the URL that they can find that on Bandcamp. Oh, um, it's um, it's just JD Cronice. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can just search me. Oh, and the sword's got stuff on there too, uh, as well as you know, Kyle has a solo record that he put out. Uh, he recorded all himself. Uh, Brian also has a solo record, like a kind of like electronic 
kind of synthy thing he did all himself um and jimmy's in another band called think no think uh that play around austin and they tour and stuff but they're they're you know austin based um so yeah you know and i was trying to put uh you know a, a kind of solo band together before all this stuff started but it's kind of put it on hold so you know hopefully it's yeah. something that's got to be such a huge pain in the ass for all musicians right now like not only halting your tour plans but your recording plans and your rehearsal plans and all of that yep pretty much everything <laughs> except you know i mean I'm, I'm envious of these bands that are doing live streams and stuff a little bit because uh you know some of those i've watched have been really cool Unfortunately, you know, because we don't all live in the same state, I don't, we, you know, it'd be a little trickier for us, but, um, you know, maybe we'll figure it out. It'd be trickier, but I bet you could do it. Um, are you familiar with Two Minutes to Late Night, the metal yeah. talk show? Yeah. So they've been releasing those, like, bedroom yeah. covers. Yeah, they, really like, really splice it all together. Yeah, I think if you so, did it in, like, a recording kind of thing, you can do it, but, if, like, a li like, all live all together, I don't know if that's possible. Um, yeah, but, there'd know, be a can... lag or something. Yeah. Let's see what other questions we got. They're really rolling in. Um, what's your favorite new band that maybe we haven't heard yet? Uh, new band? I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm not that up on stuff these days. Uh, the latest record I've gotten really into is that uh, newest Church of the Cosmic Skull album i don't know if people oh are, cool there are a few records out they're not super new but they're kind of new i guess um but they're i think it's their third album just came out uh like a few months ago uh i think it's really great i love them um they're really fun they make music fun uh, <laughs> that's so. important yeah so transitioning back into regular questions um so you have a whole bunch of covers on the uh the chronology box set um immigrant song by led zeppelin you have two zz top songs which made me very happy um nasty dogs and funky kings and also cheap sunglasses uh forever my queen by pentagram um the kiss song she oh, I, I, i'd like to note that I, I think we're the only band that actually knows how to play the end of forever my queen <laughs> the recordings that have been released it, they faded out for some reason but we we've actually heard the original ones. Um, oh my god! Happenstance, like before that, like before I even knew who that band was, I had a friend that had a cassette of that, and like we we we. So when you hear our version, that's how the end is supposed to sound. And <laughs> so just just FYI, that's really interesting. I'm gonna go listen to it again as soon as this is over, because that's such a great song. That's one of those songs that's like, you know, you, you hear the the name Doom, and you assume it's all got to be like slow and depressing and um morose but doom is fun <laughs> and that song is like such a classic oh yeah so how did you guys decide on all those songs you know i mean they were kind of all done at different times uh just recorded on our own so you know it's i'm not even sure like, a lot of times it was just whatever we thought was fun or cool at the time or things mm -hmm. that we had in the live set or something for a little while um yeah you know, just so just they were recorded all at different times or did you do them all at once? Most of uh, a few of them, I think, were done, you know, back to back in the same same session or whatever. But they were kind of done, you know, just randomly here and there. Just, you know, Brian, our bass player, uh, is, a, you know, recorded us a lot, you know, just on his own. Just, you know, when we didn't have anything better to do, just set up some mics and some drums and some amps and, you know, record a couple of songs. Mm -hmm. That's rad. Well, I love that you have two ZZ Top songs. I mean, one would have been amazing, but two, especially being a band that was from that was in Texas for a long time, was a of course. Of course. cool homage. Um, are you guys big ZZ Top fans? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, huge. What's your favorite ZZ Top record? Uh, Tejas. Nice. I think mine's probably Trace Hombres. Not sure. I mean, they're all good. <laughs> Yeah, all those early ones are great. All right, we got more questions here. Of course, there are tons of questions about if you're going to put out a new record. <laughs> and I feel like... Um, yeah, I mean, at some point, you know, uh, hopefully, we'll see. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of 
stuff that needs to be worked out before all that happens. You know, obviously this whole situation needs to pass. You know, we're, we're technically kind of free agents right now. So we'd need to figure out if we're going to look for a new label or put it out ourselves or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it might be a while, but. Mm -hmm. Well, we look forward to it if it does happen. Um, what are you listening to in quarantine? Any new or old discoveries? Um, let's see. Other than that Church of the Cosmic Skull. Uh, what have I been listening to? Um, I finally listened to, broke down and listened to uh, that first, or that uh, John Mayall Blues Breakers album uh, that Clapton plays his Les Paul through a, you know, Marshall combo and it's supposed to be the blueprint for all overdriven guitar tones ever <laughs> that was one of those things those things was like okay i gotta listen to this record that i've never heard you know um totally uh you know i do stuff like that like just youtube records of like you know checking out things like that i haven't heard um that i kind of fell through the cracks um but uh yeah i don't know um yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't really sit around my house and listen to music too much. It's usually something I do when I'm doing other things or when I'm out, which I don't do too much anymore. Right. Uh, or at least these days. So yeah. Would you say that when you're not on tour and you're not um, actively involved with the sword, that you gravitate more toward heavy music, or that you gravitate more toward like blues and no. folk stuff? No. Yeah, I, I listen to heavy music in pretty small doses. Um, I listen to a lot of, I mean, just all over the place, but uh, yeah, music that puts a smile on my face, you know, usually like, so that's why I like that Church of the Cosmic Skull band. Um, but like a lot of like just, uh, you know, soul and funk and, you know, old country and, uh, you know, stuff with a good groove, good melody, good hook, good songs. I was just watching this really hilarious uh, Joe Walsh uh, instructional video from like the early 90s where he's doing how to like restring the guitar. And it's great. Uh, yeah. Joe Walsh is a funny man. He's hilarious. <laughs> I feel like uh, he's underappreciated. You know, like people love bit. to recite the, the line from the Big Lebowski about the Eagles, but. The Eagles yeah. had some hits, and their individual musicians, I feel like, had a yeah, lot of great Joe, songs. Yeah, Joe Walsh is the man, and yeah, he's. I think because of his Eagles days, he's he's maybe a little <laughs> underrated or something. Or people know his hits, but like he's such a yeah, such a rad guitar player and such a rad dude. And yeah, I love Joe Walsh. Yeah, like um, I feel like his riffs, like he's got. It's not just like good guitar solos or whatever, like. He's the type of dude that people who like stoner rock or who like heavy music in general can get into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's just a great guitar player and his his guitar playing is so, so, I don't know, tasty and just like easy to like. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. how do you like 49? That's one of, you know what I mean? That's like, that song is just, like, you know, that's, that's so classic. Totally. Anybody watching, if you think you hate the Eagles, listen to Joe Walsh. Yeah, I should, man, I should have worn my Eagles shirt. I didn't know what you were going to talk about. <laughs> well, you could go change into it right now. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. I'm going to try to get to a question that's unlike any of the ones we've had before. Oh, here's a good one. What are your hobbies outside of music? Don't have a lot of hobbies outside of music. Um, yeah, my main hobby outside of you know, other than playing guitars is working on them, but uh, that's just kind of serves, you know, that serves the other thing. Um, mm. I don't know. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, I got a couple dogs. I, uh, you know, I nerd out once in a while with the, with, you know, my, my boys and play a little, roll some funny <laughs> dice. Um, you know, that's about it. You know. Can we see your dogs? Can you see? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can. <laughs> I feel like anytime I do a live stream and I know there's a pet available, oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's important that we see. All right. So, uh, 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> he, he's a toy poodle. Um, <laughs> he needs a haircut pretty bad, like me. <laughs> One, two, like three. all of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, so cute. And the other one is running around. Come here, sit. Uh, this is oh. awful. Uh, here, I'm gonna just sword fact, if I can get him to sit still. Come here, come here, sit. Well, he's, he's crazy. Oops. Yeah. So, Hold on, you froze for a second. What'd you say? Sword right, fact, yeah, got, what? Got flipped around again. Yeah, sorry, my dog's too crazy for me to make him sit still <laughs> okay. and show you. But uh, he's an Australian Shepherd and he's actually uh, the inspiration for the song Ghost Eye off of uh, High Country. Yeah, oh, cool. He, he has one, one blue eye. So I love that about that, Australian that, Shepherds. That, that song is about my dog. That's so cool. They always have such beautiful eyes. Yeah. I like how your dogs are like extremely different too. Yeah. Oh yeah, very different. Um, let's, see. let's see. So many questions about a new record. I guess you guys better make one. Yeah, just gonna have to wait on that, guys. <laughs> Be patient. All right. Uh, I knew this question would come up. Have you been watching Tiger King? No, I have not. You know, I mean, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say, I just, I, I have a natural aversion to things that are like the biggest thing ever. You know what I mean? Like it was something I saw initially, like saw the, the trailers for, and was like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. And then as soon as it was like the biggest thing ever, I was just, I kind of immediately lost interest. That's just me, you know, my contrarian. Nature. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I don't care now. It's like the topic of everyone's conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I got to say, I, I, yeah, I'm just, just an asshole about it. But <laughs> no, I haven't watched it. Honestly, you're probably better off. There is not one single good person to be, well, that's not true. It's like a couple of the groundskeepers are okay. But for the most part, it's just like terrible people um, yeah. getting their 15 minutes of fame. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I don't know where the new questions are coming in. I keep seeing them pop up and then I open it. It's a bunch of the same ones. You have several questions about if you're going to come to Europe anytime soon. Uh, probably not anytime soon. Uh, you know, yeah. Cause uh, who knows when touring will start again. And then the next thing we'll do when it does start is, you know, probably the primest thing. So, yeah. Sorry guys. That's a pretty yeah. huge thing. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite Eagles record? Um, probably Long Run. That's a good one. Yeah. Because it has Those Shoes and, uh, um, uh, Teenage Jail, which I don't know if anybody's ever heard the song Teenage Jail. It's like the Eagles metal song. It's, it's pretty, pretty gnarly. I don't even think I know that song. Teenage yeah. Jail? Yeah. It's got this really, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add that to my list too. To the, I'm going to listen to the end of uh, Forever My Queen, and then I'm going to listen to TH Jail. <laughs> so going back Yeah, it's back got this super, to... super minor key uh, uh, chord progression. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's rad. Well, so going back to before, when you guys were like in the thick of it and you were touring all the time, um, What's a favorite tour memory that you have? Like, what's one of the crazier things that's happened? Um, crazy? I don't know. Uh, hmm. Um, the thing that I was thinking of um, when you told me this might be a, a question um, was, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, there's like, yeah, you know, like that Kai's tour. You know, a lot of times I just remember the. Uh, the tour was great. Like the Caius tour was great. Obviously all the Metallica stuff was great. That's like a whole, you know, couple years of best tour stories. Um, you know, uh, but for me personally, like one that always stands out that I remember uh, just cause it was kind of my personal thing. Cause it was, um, we played this festival in Spain. I think it was 2015 summer, 2015. Uh, and the Black Crows were the headliner. And it was kind of a small rock festival. And, you know, we, we can't come across, you know, 
bands of different genres and stuff, but you know, usually other heavy bands and rock bands and metal bands, but you know, rare every now and then a band like that, but pretty rarely. And just so happened, like they're one of my favorite bands from like, since I was like a kid, they were one of the first like current rock bands I got. Like when I was getting into Nirvana and stuff, I was also getting into the Black Crows. Hell yeah. Was, and I think I was the, I, and I was like the only kid. I was the only friend, of, you know, I didn't have any friends that liked both of those things that, you know, had a foot in both of those. That's rad. You know, arenas. But I've always loved him. I always, I always loved him. And uh, we, so we, yeah, we got to play with them. And it turned out they had heard of us. They, they were stoked to see us, knew who we were, wanted to smoke weed with us. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, I met Chris Robinson and had a conversation with them. And it was just crazy. And it was just like exactly like you would want a conversation with a famous dude like Chris Robinson to be. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those, you know, like, you know, ni nice, nice days for sure. Um, That's yeah, so that cool. Was, that but, must have been but, surreal. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody was stoked because, you know, we saw they were, they were amazing. That was like right, and it was a few months before they kind of broke up, you know, this is like right before they kind of ended as a band. And, uh, and they were so good. I mean, they're, they were so, they were on the top, top of their game. And, uh, and, but yeah, for, I mean, and we were all, everybody was stoked on it. But for me personally, like being a fan from so far back, like it was like a special, special moment, you know. That's incredibly cool. And it seems like over the course of your career, you have, you've gained the attention of like tons of legends. Like I'm looking at your press release, let me call it up. Um, you have quotes from Neil Fallon from Clutch, Mark Morton from Lamb of God, um, Lars Ulrich, um, like so many people oh. love the sword and are so inspired by you. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, you know, of course, we called the like, you know, most famous guys we knew <laughs> you know, to, get, <laughs> of course. To, to give us those quotes. Uh, but they were nice enough to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, looking back at your like 12 year old self, what do you think you would have said if, uh, if somebody had told you that people like that would be speaking about you on a press release one day? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, 12 is probably a little young, maybe my 15 or 16 year old self. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause yeah, I don't think I, yeah, I didn't play guitar yet when I was 12, but um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I probably, I probably would have said like, well, okay, you say so. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I was, a, I was a dumb teenager. I don't know what I would have thought. Um, yeah. Totally. But, uh, but it's great. It's uh, I'm re very humbled and, and flattered. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see. More questions. I think I'm going to pick like three more. Sure. I think we got to wrap it up. Um, see if there are any weird ones in here. What inspired Eyes of the Storm Witch? Ah. Uh, well, um, it's. Uh, I. I just kind of, I like girls with blue eyes and uh, very <laughs> pronounced brows. And that's just kind of what I call that. Eyes of the storm, which I like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not an answer that I expected. Yeah, or it, really could, cool. it could mean something else to you, but that's just like, <laughs> you know. That's, that's just I love like, that. It's like the look, you know. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's really cool when a band can take a total normal life thing, like having a crush on girls or anything and turn it into like this fantastical story that inspires a song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other things like that in the Swords catalog? Oh, probably. Um, geez, yeah, I don't it's know. hard to think of yeah. when you're on the spot, but. <laughs> yeah. That's why live stream interviews are so weird. If you have time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, especially like, you know, having just like look back at our whole catalog to put together this like these compilations. Yeah, it's hard to like look, you know, see it as anything but one big mass of stuff. Well, speaking of that, I mean, when you were putting together these um, these anthologies, what was sort of your process for picking which rarities went on to the, the final product? 
Uh, well, for that stuff, it was whatever we had that was usable. We wanted to kind of, you know, empty the the vaults, uh, you know, so to speak, and just put put out everything that we had that we thought was worthy of being put out. Um, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, as long as it was a finished track that, you know, had all the parts that we could mix and make sound good or, you know, master and make sound good. Yeah. yeah. Everything went in there. So there's not really, you know, there's no, not any like long lost uh, sword material or anything like that at this point. Like once these come out, like that's pretty much it. I noticed that somebody else in there asked a question about if you will ever release acoustic versions of the Age of Winter's era of the sword. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I mean, I never say never, but no, no plans for that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right, I'm going to take two more. Who is primarily responsible for the artwork on your albums? Um, well, I mean, I, I usually choose it and work with the artist, if that's what you mean. Uh, we always have different people doing it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's always it's always me that that like uh, usually finds the artist or you know yeah works with the artist or in the last in case of use future the photographer. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. you're like the the curator. Yeah, the I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it, as far as like what the sword looks like and like you know when it comes to aesthetics and that sort of thing, like that's you know that's that's my domain, I guess you know. Mm hmm. Well, it's cool because it seems like the artwork always really reflects sort of the tone and the, um, not genre, but the direction that you guys are going in at that time. I always really like that about the sword. You can kind of tell what it's going to look like by looking at the cover. <laughs> you can ju judge a sword album by the cover. Literally, you can. <laughs> That's all right, because I think we have pretty good covers. So. I mean, judge is a... I, I wouldn't say that because it's not like I'm going, that's going to suck or that's going to be good. It's no, I, like... I, I know. What <laughs> but yeah, you're totally right. All right. One more. I kind of asked you this earlier a little bit. But what would you consider to be the best album that you've ever made? Um, again, that's a little subjective, but I'm going to say, I mean, for me personally, the best album I think is Use Future, as far as like an album from beginning to end that is like cohesive and totally works together and like is like, I don't know, some, I think some pretty good songwriting and performances, um, you know, uh, as an album, I'm going to say Use Future, yeah. Awesome. Well, it is a fantastic album. And speaking of albums, so both the box sets, or I guess you said one of them is a box set, one of them is a set of LPs. Yeah. Um, they're both Delu coming out Deluxe June LP 5th. Deluxe, yeah. Deluxe LP package. Yes. Um, both are coming out on June 5th, so everybody make sure that you pre-order those and get tickets to see The Sword when they go on tour in the rescheduled, um, yeah, whatever that is, <laughs> with, um, with Primus playing all Rush covers, which is gonna be extremely cool and special. Um, so, um, where can people go to support the sword and also your solo projects right now during quarantine? Um, well, uh, you can pre-order our record from our website, uh, which is the sword Uh, and then, uh, you can find us and me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and yeah, like, as I was saying before on Bandcamp, um, and just under JD Cronice, usually, you know one word or whatever uh yeah um uh, yeah please please do help us out help out us poor musicians and download our stuff off bandcamp today yeah if you didn't catch it earlier bandcamp is not taking any cut of any sales that happen today it's gonna 100 percent of it's gonna go to the musicians so if you're going to go to bandcamp to buy stuff make sure it's today yeah and i see i actually got you know a few people since i said that have actually uh I've downloaded it, so thank you. Oh my God, much. that's awesome! Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Well, JD, thank you so much for thank you coming and talking to me. This is super fun, and um, whenever your tour does happen, I'm very excited to go. Well, thanks. So. Hope to see you. Hell yeah! All right, see you later. See you. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for watching.